Greetings Earth enthusiasts. If you ever wondered about the incredible perspectives our planet has to offer from high above you in the right place. I am Dr. Cloud Kutsi and I'm thrilled to be your guide on this captivating journey into the world of remote sensing. Welcome. And please remember to like, subscribe to and share this video. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we did our random forest uh, regression modeling in our studio. And that, I think, is it from a modeling point of view. I think we've got sufficient models now to start comparing them. Uh, we don't know at this stage which one is uh, the better one, which one is the worst ones, etc. So that's going to be the focus of the next one or two video tutorials, is to try to get an understanding of these models and how they compare to each uh, to one another. So that's the focus of going to be the next one or two video tutorials. So as I said, we've done all the the modeling within uh, Earth Engine and within our studio. Yeah, so we've done all the uh, the models. So I'm happy that we could model them all in our studio. We could generate um, the predicted values, we rasterize our predicted values, we moved it into QGIS, and in QGIS we've got now an inventory or a list of, of uh, predicted images. This is it. This is how it looks. There's the actual one and there's all of them. So, uh, now what, we, what I had to do is to shorten the name of these, um, of these images. As you'll see, they are, have different names than what they were in the previous video tutorials, simply because of when we get, uh, we're going to extract the values, um, the names of the rows is, of the columns are limited in size. You can only do short little descriptions in the, in the attribute column. You cannot do a whole thing. So I had to. And I think some of these, like uh, these ones, may still be too long. But let's have a look. We'll see. Okay, so there they are. That's the, the actual value uh, of my NDVI. And that's all the predicted NDVI values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So there's 23 of them. So there's 24 images. And uh, actual image and 23 predicted images. Now I want to compare these now with one another. I want to generate a comparison and um, evaluate them and, uh, and rank them from 1 to 23 in terms of best performing to worst performing. And see whether these models are, are the groups of models that's better or it's, it's totally random, etc. So first I want to do, we can generate uh, in our studio, in our studio, we can generate uh, this, um, um, the mean square errors, um, like we've done, let me just quickly find one, um, we can like, what is it now? Uh, evaluate, evaluate, then, uh, sorry, we can um, generate the root mean square errors of, of all of them in, uh, in, in uh, all 23 and then determine that. Okay, so we can do that in our studio, that's fine, we can do that, but I'm actually not going to work in our studio for this, I'm actually want to work in Excel. Um, because I'm going to apply different uh, tools. So, first thing that I want to do is I want to create a, a random uh, layer, point layer file. So, I want to generate random points. Okay, and I'm going to do about 5,000, I think, should be sufficient. Should we do that much? Uh, yeah, let's do 5,000 random points. So, I want to generate 5,000 random points and then extract all of the, the values, the predicted values for, the, for each and every random point. So each random point will then have 23 or 24 values, NDVI values, the actual value and the predicted value. So we're going to generate a point uh, layer um, and then uh, ex, um, uh, generate the data for each of those 5,000 points and then 
um, save that as a Excel file and then in Excel do a couple of things and I'm also gonna move it into a point layer shape file um, and then evaluate my 500 5,000 points for complete spatial randomness so those are the two things that we're gonna focus on for now so first thing that I need to do is generate my 5,000 points Okay, so that's the first thing that I'm going to do in QJ. Generate my generate my 5,000 points. Now I'm going to go to vector. Okay, so go to vector. And then I'm going to go to analysis, no, research tools. Okay, research tools. And then random points inside polygons. So that's the, the option that you're going to take. Okay, so you go to vector, research tools. And random points inside polygons double click on that there's my input layer basically it's just your your boundary file your boundary file so I'm gonna do my boundary file this one here okay, which is my boundary file I'm gonna do a points count another points density and I'm gonna do let's do 5,000 one two three 5,000 points uh, and it's going to be in meters happy with this minimum distance I'm not going to do a distance between them I'm just going to leave it because I want to generate uh, random points now we're going to test it for complete spatial randomness so that we don't have inherent biases in our results okay so that's why it's important that these points are random each point should have an equal opportunity of being included so I don't want to manipulate that. That's it. Okay, so we're going to generate it. And let's just select the place where we're going to save it. Open the file. I'm not going to save it as yet. Because there's still one or two things that I'm going to do. And so I don't need these intermediate files. Uh, just looking for the final um, uh, uh, point layers file. And this is not that. It's one of them. So I'm just going to press run. There it is. So there is my 5,000 points. Uh, let's just move it to there. You'll see if I open it and I go to attribute table. And if I go down, you'll see there is 5,000 on them. Okay, so there's the 5,000 points. Now what I want to do is I want to generate the uh, coordinates for each of these points. Because if I want to um, explore it for spatial randomness I need the uh, coordinates if I want to move it into let's say Geoda or I want to move it into our studio I need the uh, coordinates for each of these points okay because in fact they are now I wouldn't they're not a centroid of it it is random points but they have a unique Latin along X, X, uh, X and Y coordinate so I first want to generate because at the moment if you have a look at it open attribute table it's just the the, the 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 value the unique value of each uh, point it doesn't have the uh, spatial dimensions of it so, so I want to create a spatial dimension so I'm going to go to vector I'm going to go to uh, uh, geometry okay. I'm going to go to geometry okay. and in geometry I'm going to go add geometry attributes and that's basically where we add the the coordinates, the x and y, or the lat and long coordinates. Uh, so I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to take the random points. It's five thousand random points. Um, we keep that because it's gonna we're gonna change that now. No. And I'm not gonna save it. It's gonna be a, 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 a it's gonna be a, a saved to as a temporary file, which we're gonna delete. Uh, but that should create the X and Y. So we're going to just click run. And there it is. Let's have a look and see. Move it in there. There's my 5,000 random points. If I right click, I go open attribute. You'll see it's got now the actual value, the number, unique number, identification number of each point, and it's X and Y. It's uh, long and lat. So I'm happy with this. Now, let's quickly just look at its um, coordinate reference system. So we're going to go properties and we're going to go to source and it is in the desired format. It's in meter. So now that I'm happy with it, now that I'm happy with it, I'm going to actually save it, export it, save it as a shapefile. 
uh, and I'm going to save it into my project folder as call it predict random points predict random points and I'm saving it as a point layer shape file so let's click, click it it should there we go and I could now delete these two but that one we can delete these two temporary files remove it and there they are there's my random points if I open it you'll see it's got a unique each point has a unique ID number and it's got an X and a Y. So I'm happy with this now. So that's that's good. Now, we need to actually test this for complete spatial randomness to make sure that there's no inherent biases, etc. Et so if in R, if you go to R, they have here point pattern analysis. but And they have the various functions to test for complete spatial randomness. The F function, the G function, the Monte Carlo, quadrat, etc. If we click on the F function and we select our random points, keep the S, and we select run, you'll see it will tell you it cannot do it. So let's quick, quickly just wait for it. But while while we're waiting for it, just to say it cannot do it, it can't coerce. You'll see now it can't coerce. No method for coercing a SF spatial to a spatial data point. So it cannot do that. So how we overcame this is was by, okay, so it's not going to work. But how it, if I just edit the script, how we overcame this is by using RGDAL. Is convert, is use RGDAL to convert it. And that used to work. But now, unfortunately, RGDAL doesn't exist. So we cannot use that. So these point pattern analysis uh, options within R, uh, for QJS doesn't work. You see, this RGDAL doesn't doesn't actually work anymore in R in, in in QJS. This uh, plugin has been discontinued. So this renders um, the point pattern analysis function within R basically useless. And if uh, function you could only do in R um, you can see this so you can only do it in R you cannot do complete spatial um, functions within the other services that's available there but we can do that in uh, R Studio we can do that in R Studio so we can generate all these tests um, in R Studio and that's what we're going to do in another in the following video. We're going to do this. You see, we're going to generate a random test, and we're going to do that a bit later. First of all, what we need to do before we can, yeah, well, we don't need the data to generate. We don't need the, the actual predicted data. We just need the spatial di dimensions of each point to determine the spatial randomness. So we don't actually need to populate it with data, but obviously we want to populate these 5,000 points with all this data so that we can work with it in terms of our evaluation of the models. So we're going to go to um, extract um, and we're going to use the Saga option because that was working its ex uh, extract points from lines. Where is it now? It's Extract by attribute. Because this is for, for, for whatever. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Before we do that, we have to make sure that all our files are in the same coordinate referencing system. So we haven't um, we haven't done that as yet. Um, sorry. Let me just quickly go there. Points. Points. To raster. There we add raster values to points. So that's the one in Saga that we're going to use. I found that to be the most efficient one to use. Now, if you haven't installed Saga or it's not available, um, you have to activate Saga in QGIS. In the past, it used to come with, but now the latest version of QGIS, it doesn't. You have to manually install that. Uh, there's some videos on YouTube how to manually install Saga. So um, you can just do that. And then Saga will also be located 
under options if I go to my processes my providers you'll see saga is the saga okay so saga is located there and it's also a plugin that you can if I go manage install you go um, all you can go to saga and there's this processing saga next generation provider okay so install that and that should, uh, gives you access to saga and I use this add raster values to points function in saga uh, to populate or to track for whatever reason the others doesn't seem to be that efficient however two things we need the names as short as possible we've done that okay so the names are short so we've done that the next thing is we need to make sure that all of these are in the same coordinate referencing system which is the same as my random points so in this case it's 3857 look at this one 3857 that one see there is 4326 that's one 4326 you see all of them have different 4326 4326 4283857 so let's have a look and see if we go to our reprojected one we go to that it's 3857 so all of them needs to be 3857 okay now what we can do is we have to do them um, and convert them into the same coordinate reference system 3857. Okay, so if you see where's this one 4326, if we go there, you'll see it's not in the meters, it's still in the decimals. So, so we're going to go to raster, we're going to go uh, conversion, ah, sorry, extraction, no, sorry, projections. Okay, so raster projection the rat project now i'm going to run it as a batch i'm going to run it as a batch and here we need to select all our four three two six one so i'm going to click on this select input nope sorry i'm going to click i'm going to go on this drop down box sorry from select from open layers let me just dismiss this select from open layers and here i'm going to go to all my predicted ones because they have the same abbreviation so they all should be under there so i'm going to select all of them so from ndvi the actual ones i'm going to select all of them okay so i'm going to select all of them i'm going to make sure i don't miss anyone and there's unfortunately a lot so we're going to do all of them then just for inter sake i'm going to also do my rain my temperature because I'm also want to add these values and elevation so the original data the original four variables and the predicted ones I press ok uh, the source I'm going to select this one most of them have that so I'm just going to press auto fill fill down we know that some of them are not then the target is important and we fill down ok so we're going to go load layers and we're going to add them on top here and we're going to save them we're going to reproject we're going to save them in hours and we're just going to make them a small r in front now let's make it another p another p in front we're going to press save and then we're going to say fill with the input parameters meaning we use the same name and if we go there you'll see all of them have now a p in front I don't know why this one is doing this now. Uh, why is it doing this now? You always check these things. They like to give you nothing, unfortunately, straightforward. Ah, it's giving me that is now NDVIRP. It's giving me a lot of. So let's just delete that one. Make sure. Yeah, that's P. There's nothing else that's problematic. It all seems fine now. Uh, it all seems okay, and we're gonna we're gonna our place where we're gonna and we're gonna run them. <coughs> so the ones that already have the 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 the, the accepted or have the correct 
um, couldn't reference this thing, they will they will not run. Um, only the ones that have the wrong will now run. Okay, so we're going to press close. And these are the ones. Now, so they are correct. What we need to do now. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's 13 of them that had the wrong coordinate reference system, and we fix that now. So now it's a question of selecting all of the correct ones. Okay, so it's now a matter of selecting all of the correct ones so that we don't double or miss anything. So it's not ideal, but let's go. So now we're going to go add buster. Okay, so I think what we do is let's, let's change it here. Um, B, you see, it's, it's WRP. See, it's that one there. Um, and so what we can do is we're going to remove it. So we're going to make sure that there's no W, W, R. And we're going to remove. So we're going to have to do this now for all of them. S, V. Okay. We're going to remove. Sorry. Um, S, V, M. Uh, predict S, V, M. So let me uh, remove them all, um, and I shall be back shortly. Okay, so we replaced all the updated coordinate reference uh, images, and also I, 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 I deleted all the double P, so that they're exactly the same as what they used to be. So just make sure, remember we had 23 and, and 1, so it's 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, plus 1, 24. So there we have them all now. Hopefully all in the, in the right format, short enough names, in the right coordinate reference system. Hopefully they're all sorted now. So those are steps that you have to do to do a proper extraction of the, the values itself. Otherwise, it's not going to work. It's going to give you blank if it's different coordinate references system. I'm still a little bit worried about the length of the names, but let's hopefully see it will work. If not, then we just redo it. So as I said, I'm going to use the add, add raster values to point function of Saga. Okay, and um, you just um, install that plugin. Okay, so we're going to go add raster values. The points will be the one that I've just generated, the um, uh, predicted random points file, this one here, the 5,000. And now I'm going to um, upload all of my predicted images. So they're all nicely laid out. So remember, we're going to do also the elevation. You'll see they're all 3857 now. So that's perfect. So we're also going to do the elevation one, and we can do all the prediction one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Which, which is where, where are we missing? I'm missing one. Which one are we missing? We're missing one. Did I count the wrong or what? Then remember, we're going to do the rain one. We're going to do the temperature one. Then we're going to do the NDVI one. I don't think I've missed. Oh, here we go. I don't know why it's all, they're not nicely put in alphabetical order. They're supposed to be in alphabetical. For whatever reason, this one is there and not here. So I think there we all are. We we'll just press OK. I'm not going to use, I'm just going to use the nearest neighbor. As the, because remember in some, um, some points, there may be, yeah, no, it can't be in multiple locations. They can't be, yeah, they can't, they, no, it can't be. But yeah, so we're going to use the nearest neighbor and play around with it. Uh, and I'm going to save this to random points, predicted random points, and we're going to just say data. 
and we're going to go save happy with everything where we're going to save it there we just run and it will now uh, extract the values of those images for each of those 5000 points it may take a bit of time well that's going to may take a bit of time it's going to take a bit of time um, so shall we pause again until it's done yeah let's quickly pause again and i want to yeah let's pause again until we, it's done the program has run its course and it has uploaded the data well we, yeah i think one should also do maybe a uh, bilinear uh, interpolation and uh, let's make that call it one and run it again but while this is running in the background we can open the file <coughs> oops let's say it looks like it's okay so it has run that so let's close it now let's keep it open for if we want to do something else uh, let's open attribute table see there is the actual value uh, prediction mansky prediction lag error uh, lag y mr uh, this they are all there uh, i hope so uh, come on we they are all there uh, there's the rain the temperature they should be all there strangely there's some that have no values some of some do some so these are ones that we're gonna have to delete so let me i presume let's quickly have a look if i click on that this how many are there it's not much it's 85 of them we can delete them i think so let's quickly go there and we can uh, highlight all of these ones where there's no values and we're gonna say delete delete 85 features open attribute and we're gonna save this so that's now 5000 minus 85 let's say 4900 all the rest should have values there's one, there's these ones. Are, why is that one's got no? Okay, so come on. Let's delete them as well. If they don't have any values, let's delete them because otherwise that's not the. Okay, so let's delete these ones as well. So I'm just going to activate my fit my table. Going to select these. That's what I want to delete, and I'm going to delete the selective features. Delete eleven. Yes. I'm gonna go open attribute table again and I'm gonna save it that should be done let's check any of them oh there's more but why is it some do and some don't so let's delete that one as well delete so that's I think about a hundred that's why it's good that we've selected such a large number because deleting on a hundred is not that big a deal if there's any errors any ones of them that still have let's quickly have a look and see it looks like we've deleted all of the ones with empty values okay good so let's quickly just um load it again let's have a look and see we now down to 4903 so basically we've deleted a hundred which is still cool um, there they are and we can now um, present this table we can uh, give it some uh, we can do all sorts of things with it um, symbology let's go to graduated we can do uh, all sorts of things and you'll see there they're all set so let's go this one here and we can remember we're doing the greens equal count classify apply and why is it doing all this because it's running for 5000 hopefully it's not gonna it's not responding why is it not it should not it's not that much it should work with it fairly easily here we go 
So there is my 5,000 points. And we can present the data. Um, we could, for example, do a heat map of it. I'm not going to do that now, etc. Et yeah. So there's all the data. It's nicely packaged within this file in our attribute table. All of the, the data is nicely packed. Let's quickly have a look and see if we look at um, uh, item point zero. Let's quickly compare the two tables to see whether there's any significant differences. Zero. Okay, so there's a 0 0.275 for lag error. Uh, come on, and oh, there's too many open now, so let's close it. Let's close all the open tables, attribute tables, and let's start. Otherwise, we're going to get confused which one is which one. So let's close them all. Okay, so we're going to, this one here that we did use the nearest neighbor method to extract the values, and this is one, I can't even remember what method we used. And we're going to say open attribute. See whether there's uh, any. I can't think that there's going to be a difference. So it's 5,000. It's 0 0.275. 0 0.275. 64177. Yeah, there is a bit of a difference. Okay. So interesting dimension. So let's park them. Let's save before I forget. Let's save. Now, what I'm going to do is, as I said, I want to export it into Excel, and then in Excel, uh, look at the, uh, evaluate them, and I'm also going to go into our studio to look at complete randomness of my, of my, now, 4,903 point locations. So those are the two things that's going to follow from what we've done in this particular video tutorial. So here we basically he worked our predicted images so it's in a nice format the same coordinate reference short enough names the old tutti frutti we generated our 5000 points and we extracted the values um, for each of those 5000 points and we we've um, clear cleaned up the attribute table i said now what we can do is we can right click on this one and we can export it um, into a csv file and we're going to export it into my project folder um, and we're going to call it um, predicted random okay sorry predicted random points data csv and we're going to press save okay um, Okay, so, uh, it, there's the file there, but I'm, I'm going to take it, remove it from QJS because I want to work with it. Okay, so let's keep it there, and I'm going to save. Uh, what is this then? Oh, we, we use the linear interpolation for the second method. It's actually four of them. So in fact, we should generate all four of these ones and then. Uh, evaluate and see if there's any differences between that's another dynamic that now comes into play but for now let's leave that but ideally we should we should run this um, public spine let's do this let's call it a two see if, how long that's going to take hopefully it's not going to run yep it's going to do the whole thing but anyway i'll run i'll run all three of them then we can just um, delete that, it's done, finished, that was quick, and we're going to do the spine interpolation, we call that 3, and we're going to run that now, so that's now just using different met methods to extract the values of these different images for each of the 5,000 points, um, that's also done, so there's all of them, now what we need to do is also delete in these three files, I've in these three folders, point layer folders, we also have to delete all the ones with uh, that has empty empty values. So we then all four of these point layers are then the same amount of um, 
same amount of uh, points within each one and they all have they all have only f uh, non they don't have any empty empty values so let's park there for this video tutorial let's park it there let's keep it and uh, we'll continue with this in our next video tutorial where we're gonna and i'm not sure whether we're gonna do excel or our studio first i'll see how i feel a bit later but for now let's 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 uh, leave it here i think this is uh, uh, a good good uh, note to, to stop um, yeah thanks for joining me uh, thanks for uh, your your continued support i really appreciate it please remember to like subscribe share these videos please press that uh, subscribe button um, it it makes it makes a huge difference we're not at our target yet we we we're slowly cruising to our target uh, which is which is the bad news is we're cruising which is not good because i want to have it faster the good news is that we're cruising at least there's something happening so that being said um i'll see you on the other side